Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 9, or sorry, 10 of Supernatural Season 7, Death's Door. Now this is a very tumultuous episode because this is the one where it picks up right after the last one left off with Bobby having taken a bullet by uh, Dick Roman and we find out that he took a bullet in the brain. This episode has a few factors in it that both were contributions both to the latter seasons as well as the say, taking notes from ones from uh, seasons before in terms of how it was shot and how it was put together. The first thing I gotta make a comment about is how the story and the structure is in terms of how Bobby is going through his memories being simultaneously taken from one to another just for like from a camera flip. A lot of that is taken from Dark Side of the Moon obviously when the brothers are trying to find heaven and I like this way has done it because it takes a few notes from that episode but it also kind of still keeps it on a relatively interesting and intuitive end as we pass through Bobby's memories from current uh, younger to as a child obviously with his father and these little images and sounds and room settings that will go from one to the other like one of them is him sitting with the boys watching them debate about Chuck Norris and then he turns around and it's his mother talking to him about why do you always break things. I really enjoyed that consistency and the pacing with his memories and just him trying to figure out a way out because he is dead set on trying to give the boys this information that he saw on the table at Dick Roman's office. And while that is obviously the crux of the story, there is the side element of the boys taking Bobby to a hospital. A little funny note about how Dean asks what the address is because so our GPS devices weren't really as big yet this time. So the aspect of uh, the boys just dealing with their own grief at the hospital, like when Dean almost punches the organ donor guy out, which on a side note, I would very much recommend if you guys aren't on an organ donor list, put yourselves on there. Uh, I know someone who I've worked with, uh, someone who was actually a very nice and kind person to me, and unfortunately she passed away because she wasn't able, in complications with other things, she was not able to get the, the organs that she needed to survive. I essentially say when you're dead, you're dead. There's nothing about you that matters anymore, and if uh, something happens to you and anything that's in you, whether it be your lungs, your heart, kidneys, and now you can save someone else. I had my whole body, all of my organs was on a list until I got diagnosed with cancer and then I found out that all of my body parts, even my blood is toxic. I, I can't put anything up there anymore until for some, something changes in the future maybe, but until then I unfortunately cannot. But if you think, if you have no ailments that you would prevent you from doing so, at least look into it. You could save someone's life even when you didn't know it. So off of that very dark note, yes, I understand where Dean is coming from in terms of the terminology of what the doc, the guy, the organ donor guy is talking to him about. And I like that anger because it does remind me a bit of uh, In My Time of Dying, that episode where Dean was dying and Sam was going throughout the hospital and having that anger with his father. That's a little bit of a harken to that too. And then the part that I say that contributes to the latter seasons is one, they took out the, bro the brother's father figure in the show definitely takes a hit for it. Castiel became much more of a prominent figure because of this, because truly speaking, Bobby Singer was the heart of this show. There's a comment that I've seen is that who was the better parent to Sam and Dean? Was it Mary or John? And people say Dean, when really no, it was actually Bobby. Bobby was their father figure. And we find that out through this episode. We see not only Bobby's past, as a child and some things that we had always been alluded to, especially his wife, but also just his history with the boys. And that was what made this episode such a good send off for him because it's not just about a fight for him to get back to tell the boys what he needs to do. And it's not just kind of a memory lane trip, but it also really gives a lot of uh, backstory that had never been alluded to that, well, had been kind of teased at, but never fully explained about the character. And the fact that, that he got the proper send off and we got to see just what made him who he was from his childhood and fighting his drunken abusive dickbag father to his hesitancy to become a father because of how his father was before. That's a psychological trauma that a lot of people can associate with. And then being able to find 
uh, the way out through that with his with how he dealt with his kid with the boys and how he learned to love and appreciate them for who they were that was what made his character so enjoyable so lovable and what made us all love him i really enjoyed that i thought that was very very well done the, how they shoot the dream sequences are just inside his head the fact that he's also out running a reaper with <laughs> with Rufus of all people. So good. Really wish those two had got more episodes together. The kind of puffiness, the soft lighting that's on everyone, that kind of glow, that would not entirely, but definitely become how the show was shot in the latter seasons, especially the, the ender season. Soap opera-like filter, which was properly used here because it's inside his head, it's like the line between life and death made sense. But that lighting choice, that softening choice, would soon become what how the show was shot. Not entirely, obviously, but very close to it. It's not funny enough that this is directed by Robert Singer. Robert Singer actually does try in this episode. He does actually do a good job. I think that softening, he would become to like too much, and it would just become... I found Robert Singer just became very, very lazy with how he put the show together as the show went on. But he's still trying in this episode, so give credit where credit is due on that end. I also love how it ends. I definitely love how it ends. It's so heartbreaking, but it also leaves you on that uh, that kind of, oh, what if happens? And obviously that does lead into a little bit of what happens later in the season, which I'm kind of a little bit tiny disappointed in. I understood why they went with that idea, but I just feel like, okay, you did this send off, actually commit to it, but then again, this is supernatural. So anyways, guys, in the end, my rating for Death's Door, you know what, this will probably be the most generous number I give in this entire season, but I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 7. It's a very, very good episode. It is a fantastic send-off to Bobby Singer. It is a fantastic dive into this character about what we all loved about him, what we, everyone enjoyed about him, and it's also a great send-off for him with the boys as well. Uh, obviously, the season would come to sour it later on, but... Yeah, you know what? We can't have everything we want. But anyways, that's my thoughts on it. Let's see what you guys had to say. All right, you guys got a lot to say. Death Door is one of my favorite episodes in Season 7. has one of the best emotional deaths in the series, other than Sam's previous two deaths in Season 2 and 5 finale, and of course, Dean's first death at the end of Season 3. This is one of my favorite Bobby episodes, and I love the conclusion on how he escapes his Reaper as it was never done before, and not even with Dean in Season 2 premiere. Seeing Bobby and Rufus team up and find a way for Bobby is beautiful and heartbreaking, especially at the end of the episode with Bobby seemingly having a family reunion with Sam and Dean in a memory as it fades significantly. That is, his time always makes me cry. Seeing him face his fears with his abusive father and his wife Karen, who did not understand, really gut punched me. No, it did. Like, there's a lot of emotional weight in this episode. It's like some of the best emotional writing this entire season. Death Door is such an emotional episode that anyone I talk about absolutely hates because it's a departure for a beloved gruff character named Bobby Singer. I will die on a hill and say it was one of the smartest decisions in the show because it was the most effective way to let Sam and Dean grow as characters. In spite of friendships they have with other hunters, Sam and Dean can only rely on each other in this season more and more. I agree and disagree with that one. Uh, I find that, yeah, I am going off of what I kind of initially remember, remember from this season and then the other ones. Yes, they do learn how to rely on themselves, but then they do use the, once they find the, the Men of Letters building, that becomes their new crutch because Bobby was their crutch before. Um, but in terms of characters, like their development stopped pretty much dead stop at like 10 and 11. Um, I absolutely love the acting and the cinematography in this episode. Sam gripping the hand, Scar leaving us to imagine the hallucinations he's really fighting with him and mess is heartbreaking. I actually didn't notice that, but it's good, good notice there. Dean shook by the possible reality of losing Bobby is just as heart tugging. I love how Dick Roman has the audacity to be parked in a limo outside the hospital and enjoy the suffering while Sam and Dean can do nothing to stop him. He's literally playing with his food, which leads to one of Dean's best lines as a threat. You're either laughing because you're scared or you're laughing because you're stupid. And we see Dick Roman's smile disappear. His smile when he's sitting and like when he's like trying to keep that face in front of all the people with the cameras but you can tell that his anger in it there's that's a good little bit right there like that's the part that i always forget that happens in this episode is that moment between those two 
All the Bobby flashbacks really dig deep and are very tragic, from being terrified of being a father, breaking his wife's heart, and never getting to make amends, and knowing he suffered child abuse as a child is so distressing. Bobby Singer, from when he was a child to grown up, has always been the definition of a thankless job and a thankless parent. It's crazy that the parallel of Bobby's father's death is the same as Bobby with a gunshot to the head. Oh, oh, another good notice there, Joe. The last thing I want to mention is I love the Reaper after Bobby seems like he's a bit apathetic towards Bobby's situation, and at the end you really see that he does care about Bobby's predicament down to the very end of Bobby's last memory. With the season all about dick jokes, the writers of this season had the balls to kill off a very treasured character in, in such a series. There is no death send-off for one of the Winchester's best allies and father the figure that they needed more than anyone besides each other, thus making the second best mid-season finale since season five. Ooh. I will say it was like it's a super emotional episode, and they did learn how to deal with this death later on, but considering he's not dead dead yet, um, I feel that the they they did all but pull the trigger, but then they didn't let the bullet go all the way through. And I find that it was very strange that they would go to this effort to kill this character and then to bring him back. But everything you bring up here, Joe, is very, very good. Very, very good. A lot of bits I didn't even notice, so good on you for that. Death's Door is easily Sarah Gamble's best episode in her run, which is impressive despite her seasons not being super consistent. She had one of the she had a great one-offs, very much so. Bobby leaving the show added re real weight to the show that they didn't have for a while. It's, it's a shame they brought him back in every season onwards, though. And Bobby and Rufus deserve a prequel, and I'll be waiting for that until I die. Yes. The fact that they just kept bringing him back kind of made this death not mean. Like, I understand that characters are, you know, supernatural. People don't die in this show. But I think every time he didn't, like, he kind of coming back. I'm like, yeah, Bobby's dead, but he's not really dead, so. Death's Door was a great episode. Rufus appearing again was great. He was killed off too soon. His chemistry with Bobby was great. I'd love to see a spinoff of these two main characters. That would have actually been really cool. Out of all the ideas that they tried, I'm surprised they never tried that one. But I guess they couldn't do a younger one with two old actors because they're old and you can't really make them look young and you're like, okay, well, you can get young people to play them. It's like, yeah, but then you're, you're literally missing the point of why we enjoy them so much. So three episodes in the season that hit me emotionally heart, or in the series that hit me emotionally heart, the 300th episode, yeah, and Death's Door. This is not only the best episode of the season, of season seven, but it's my fifth favorite episode of the series. It's good seeing some familiar faces, such as Karen and Rufus. Speaking of Rufus, I liked his role in this episode where he assists and guides Bobby in trying to find a way back to the real world. Moving on, we get a plethora of moments from Bobby's past rec uh, recollections, but the only two stood out for me. The first one is a scene where he, we hear from Karen that Bobby didn't want kids, and that he knew uh, she knew he knew she did, which broke her heart. The second one is the scene that always sticks with me when older Bobby confronts his father and goes in on him, calling him a drunken bully. Then seconds later, we get the best line of the episode. As fate would have it, I adopted two boys, and they grew up great. They go, they grew up to be heroes, so you can go to hell. 7 out of 7. Yes, that is a very, very good part of this episode. This episode is really great and a perfect send-off to Bobby. It was interesting knowing more about his life. I was glad to see Karen and Fleming as Bobby's wife appear in the episode. And Rufus, I did like the Reaper that it's in the episode, but it's such a it sucks that tessa didn't appear i love the scene where bobby confronts his abusive father i understand why bobby didn't want to have children because he was afraid of repeating the abusive cycle yet he did become a father to sam and dean throughout their lives and even though it was sad that bobby was killed especially how he was killed just like his father i do get why this had to happen in this way I love Death's Door. One scene I wish this episode would have shown us is one of Bobby's worst memories in the case of that he and Rufus went on in on an Omaha, where research has it that the two of them needed a getaway driver and against Rufus's uh, wishes, Bobby called Rufus's daughter and she was wounded and killed. This is... Yeah, that actually would have been interesting because like Omaha is still not truly explained. Like That's more information than I've gathered about it but yeah i think they had enough drama and like traumatic stuff to work on and they would have had to cut out some of the stuff that's happening with the boys and truly speaking there's only two scenes with them anyways both of which really are with dean so 
Yeah, it would have been cool to have it. I understand that, but I can understand why they were pressed for time. Uh, Death Door is the best episode of, the se of season seven and of the series. I can't call it a favorite though. The idea of saying I love the episode where Bobby dies <laughs> is horrible to me. What an amazing showcase for Jim Beaver. He's incredible in this episode. I also love seeing Rufus return. Jim and Steven Williams work so well together. We've we've got backstory that matters and incredible and incredible performances. I also love that Bobby's final memory is hanging out with Sam and Dean. It's a great ending. I remember watching this the first time and I didn't know what Bobby would choose. Great episode. Yeah, now all of you guys are really bringing up great points about just how good these two were together, how good Rufus and Bobby were as characters. Uh, yes, I don't like this season. Yes, Bobby should have shouldn't have died from a lame villain like Deke Roman. I don't care, but I love this episode. I was bawling my eyes out throughout the entirety of Death's Door, but the scene that killed me is when Bobby simply utters idiots. Idiots. Uh, it was devastating. I was devastated after this. Robert Singer directed this episode, and despite him getting lazy later in the seasons, here he treats his namesake uh, character with respect and dignity, giving him us one of the most emotional send-offs in the series. Although Death's Door didn't make it into my top ten, it is definitely in my honorable mentions for the best episodes of this series. R.I.P. for Bobby Singer. All great comments, guys. These are all so good. Thank you all for putting your thoughts into this. All right, guys. That's it. That's the end of this one. So now we have episode 11, which is uh, Adventures in Babysitting. So make sure to give me guys' comments about that one in the uh, comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.